Okie doke. So permit me to do a quick lemma that's going to lead us to a theorem called the crossbar theorem that you use all the time and never think about. Never, ever, ever. Uh, so here's the lemma. It actually has a name. It's called the Z-theorem. And the Z-theorem says, uh, let L be a line and let A be on the line L and D is on the line L with A not equal to D. They're not the same point. If B and E are points on opposite sides of L, B and E are points on opposite sides of L, then the intersection, so I don't have a, a, an equation editor in the Smart Notebook software, ray A, B, intersect ray D, E is the empty set. Ray A, B, intersect ray D, E is the empty set. So why would this be true? Well, this is true because all of the points on ray DE are in one half plane, and all of the points on ray AB are in the other half plane bounded by line L, except for the points that are on line L. So there can't be a point that's in both half planes. Half planes are disjoint by the plane separation postulate. So none of these points are going to be the intersection. None of these points are going to be the intersection. The only possible points that could be the intersection would be points on line L, and we know that point A is different than point D because we said so right here. So there's only one possible intersection point that would be on the line, and we know that that's not it. So we know that ray AB intersect ray DE is the empty set. Uh, they call it the Z theorem for some reason that I can't figure out. It's just a mystery why they call it the Z theorem. It must be named after a mathematician Z. Uh, so here's the theorem that we use. Uh, this is the crossbar theorem. We use this all the time. Uh, so we let triangle ABC be a triangle. Triangle ABC is a triangle. Uh, we let D be some point in the interior of angle BAC. There's some point D. Then there exists a point G such that G is on ray AD and also on segment BC. In other words, when you draw a line through A and D. When you draw ray AD, you have that ray intersect segment BC. You have that happen, even though there's really no theorem that says it should. You have some intuition that says it should. I mean, you have that. You have some, some notion that it probably should. You've drawn it a zillion times, and it worked a zillion times. But we haven't proven that it should. And so here's how this proof goes. We actually prove that this holds. We're actually going to apply Pasha's axiom to a triangle that isn't triangle ABC at all. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw line AB. Right? We can draw the line, and there's some point on line AB out here called E. There's some point E where A is between E and B. All three are on the same line. A is between E and B. And we are going to apply Pasha's axiom to triangle EBC. Why? Because we have this line... We have this line AD, right? We have this line AD. And this line AD intersects one side of triangle EBC, which means that it has to intersect another side of triangle EBC. And we are going to argue that it intersects side BC. And if this line intersects side BC, I think we can prove that ray AD intersects side BC.
But there are some options here. I mean, maybe the orange line really intersects segment EC. Maybe it's this part of the orange line that intersects segment BC. So, so here's what we've got to show. We've got to show that ray AF, we didn't even talk about F, F is some point on the orange line so that A is between F and D. So we've got to show that ray AF never intersects segment EC, because maybe that's the situation. We've got to show that ray AF never intersects segment BC, because we want ray AD to intersect segment BC. And we've got to show that ray AD never intersects segment EC, because we want the orange line to hit BC, and we want this part of the orange line to hit BC. So these are the other options. And if all of these hold, if all of these intersections are empty, then we're left with ray AD is the one that intersects segment BC. So why is this one true? Well, this is true because we can apply the Z theorem We have line AE, and we have points C and F on opposite sides of line AE. Why are C and F on opposite sides of line AE? Well, because C, uh, D is in the interior of BAC. D is not on the F side of line of this line here. So because D is in the opposite half plane bounded by AE as F, and C is in the same half plane as D, C is in the opposite half plane bounded by AE as F. So the Z theorem applies, and this ray never intersects this ray, and if ray AF never intersects ray EC, then ray AF never intersects segment EC. Why does this hold? Well, we're going to apply the Z theorem. Line AB is the bounding line. C and F are on opposite sides of line AB. And so ray AF and ray BC never cross. Never cross. Then third, why is this true? We'll apply the Z theorem again. I'm so sorry. I have drawn this slightly badly. I want to, oh, let's undo the blue. Oh. I'm so sorry, folks at home. You just want to get to the end of the video. We'll apply the Z theorem in this way. Um, D and E are on opposite sides of line AC. Why? Because B and E are on opposite sides of line AC, and C and D are on the same side. Nope. D is on the B side of AC because of the interior argument up here. So D and E are on opposite sides of line AC. So ray AD and ray CE never cross. Those three are all true. And since this intersection is empty and this intersection is empty and this intersection is empty, all that's left is that it must be that ray AD intersects the segment BC somewhere, call that point G. Okay? Okay.